shooting at black families at their homes and businesses on September 11th. On September 12th, they say he shot and killed a homeless man, 59-year-old Bruce Cofield. Two days later, 49-year-old Donald Smart. You're watching the most shocking and informative LRJ TV News. Hello, I'm LRJ from LRJ TV News. Let's now waste no more time. Uh, let's go. Covering the evidence that they say they needed to arrest a person of interest in two brutal murders that may be racially motivated. Tonight, what they found inside his home. And here's ABC's Steve Osinsami. Louisiana police tonight are investigating whether this man, 23-year-old Kenneth Gleason, may have been targeting black Americans in and around Baton Rouge. And for many here, this picture today sent a message. The accused murderer being led away by black police officers. Do you have anything to say? Kenneth, did you kill those two guys? Was it racially motivated? Do you have anything to say, Kenneth? What would you like to say to your family? Had there not been a swift conclusion to this case, I, I feel that confident that this killer would have probably killed again. Investigators say he bought a 9 millimeter handgun in November and started shooting at black families at their homes and businesses on September 11th. On September 12th, they say he shot and killed a homeless man, 59-year-old Bruce Cofield. Two days later, 49-year-old Donald Smart, a dishwasher who was walking to work. I just got out of my car and I heard about 10, 11 shots. Donald Smart was supposed to be somebody's grandfather, and he's not going to be someone's grandfather. Witnesses kept reporting a young white man speeding away in a red car. This morning, police say DNA evidence linked Gleason to both murder scenes and say when they searched his home, they found a copy of a speech written by Adolf Hitler. Police tonight are looking over surveillance videos from local businesses as they build their case against this young man. He has not yet entered a plea. I don't know what to say. I've already, I mean, I can sit here and give you a long speech about this video. But I've already told you guys what's going to happen. Arrested for fatally stabbing a 66-year-old black man with a sword on a New York street earlier in the week. Jackson turned himself into police after seeing himself caught on security cameras on the local news. He'd traveled from Baltimore to carry out the crime and, according to the NYPD, chose New York as well as his victim deliberately. The reason why he picked New York is because it's the media capital of the world and uh, he wanted to make a statement. His intentions were to come here to harm male blacks. Out to Sean Urbanski with a knife, stabbed Richard Wilbur Collins and killed him. aren't releasing many details on the foiled hit, just that it was ordered by white supremacists and targeted a local. It's a little shocking, but I, I can't say I'm entirely surprised. That's because this isn't the first time Warsaw has made headlines for white supremacy. There's been a history of it for a long time in this area, so it's not really a surprise. Six years ago, federal agents raided this Warsaw home. It's the listed residence of what many consider to be one of the most notorious white supremacists in America. Tom Metzger, Warsaw native, Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan, and founder of White Aryan Resistance, WAR for short. He lost one of the largest civil suits in Oregon's history, $12.5 million, after young men affiliated with WAR killed an Ethiopian student. And he made headlines here in 2006 after designing a controversial video game that rewards players for shooting Mexican immigrants crossing the U.S. border. That's the way a hell of a lot of people feel in this country, and uh, and uh, a large there's a percentage of those people would like to do it. The war is coming. I'm LRJ. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Why? Because you be glad you did. I love you all. Peace.